lift your name on high. You are worthy. Thank you. You are mighty God. You are mighty God. You are mighty God. We give you praise in this house. Praise you, Lord. You are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name, O Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. He's a good, good God. Oh, yeah. He's a good, good God. Praise. He's yeah. worthy of our praise. Yeah. He's, a God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Glory. He's a mighty God. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank the man you. came to Jesus. He said, I know you can heal me if you will. Jesus said, no, I don't heal people. <laughs> no. no. I will. No, he said, I will. That's right. That's what he said. If you want to know if it's God's will to heal, Jesus went about doing good, healing yes. all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. For God was with him. Healing, good. Amen. Every good and perfect gift comes down from God, from the yes. Father of lights, with whom is no variableness. Neither shadow of turning. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Jesus, the creator of the universe, Amen. he is still working in people's lives. Yes. He's working yes. to set you free, to make yes. you whole. Yes. He wants to heal your body. He Amen. wants to deliver you from sin. He wants to bless you so you can be a blessing right. to us. Right. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He's mighty God. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank well, you, Lord. glory. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's my God. Speak Amen. the word with me tonight, will you? The Bible says, meditate on the word day and night. Mm -hmm. Observe to do all that's written therein. And then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Now, to meditate in the Hebrew means to speak or mutter. Speak or mutter the word. One time I was in a place that I was working. And I do that under my breath all the time. And I was just like giving God praise and glory. And I was sitting there. I was waiting in the dispatcher's office for a load to come out. My load was supposed to be ready like at 6 in the morning because I made deliveries all around Kansas City. But I had to have the load ready so I could make deliveries. And I had a whole day's worth of deliveries. And I was sitting in the dispatch office for hours. And I was sitting there. And I was giving God glory and praise. Under my, under my, the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And so, like, I'm either praying in tongues under my breath, or I'm giving God praise and glory under my breath. And so I was giving God praise and glory under my breath, and the dispatcher saw me sitting there mumbling. And he thought I was griping about the load, my load not being ready, because it, it was supposed to be ready four hours before. And I'm sitting there saying, oh, thank, I thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you glory. I magnify your name. I glorify you. And he said, he looked over at me, and he said, what did you say? Oh. And I said, I said, thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you glory. I magnify your name. And he looked, looked at me like, because he thought I was cussing him out or something. I, I said, it's, it was good I wasn't praying in tongues. Because <laughs> What did he say? 
he would have really looked at me funny then. Because I would have just told him what I said. Glory. You see? But listen, we need to get used to speaking God's word. Yes. That's why we speak the word of God Amen. in this house, to get you used to speaking God's word. If yes. you get the word of God big in you, you do that through speaking his word, from mumbling yes. his word, from meditating on his word. That is to speak it under your breath over and over and over. By doing that, not only do you get the word planted in your heart, but then it becomes so big in you, it's hard for you to believe anything else. Amen. Because you've got God's word. And the entrance of God's word gives light. The entrance of God's word brings healing. He sent his word and healed them Amen. and delivered them from their yes. destruction. Amen. God wants you well. He wants you healed. Because Jesus is the healer. He is our redeemer. Amen. He is the one that sets us free. Yes, he does. Yes. Amen. He sets us free. Yes. He set me free. Yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound my Jesus to see. Glory to God, he set me free. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound my Jesus to see. Glory to God, he set me free. And who the Son has set free is what? Free. Glory to God. Say this with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ strengthens me. Christ strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The greater one is in me. The greater one is in me. The greater one is in me. Jesus bear my sin in his own body on the tree so I can be dead to sin and live under righteousness. So I say with my mouth, I'm dead to sin. Sin has no place in me. I'm delivered from sin by Jesus. Power in me. Thank you, Lord. By his stripes, I was healed. If I was healed, then I am healed. So I declare with my mouth, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. His healing virtue is flowing through me now, making me completely whole. In Jesus' name, sickness, disease, infirmity, leave in the name of Jesus. And I give you praise, Lord. You're a mighty God. Well, glory. Glory. Praise you, Father. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise you, Hallelujah. Jesus. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. Oh, Lord. we give you all glory, Lord. Praise yes. God. Praise you, Father. Thank glory to you. Turn with me to the book of James, Hallelujah. chapter 5. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Book of James, chapter 5, verse 14. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Now, James was the pastor of the church in Jerusalem and had thousands of people in the church of Jerusalem. On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 got saved on that day. A few days later, they went into the temple, James and John, and God led them to raise up a, a lame man. And he went walking and leaping and praising God. Yes. And, and that day, 5,000 people got Glory saved. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Because Peter and John preached the gospel yes, about Jesus. Yes, In the temple, there were thousands, thousands of people in the temple. And they preached the gospel in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank they you. says the name of Jesus and faith in that name, which has made this man whole. Amen. The name of Jesus and faith in that name. And they commanded them before they left to not preach in the name of Jesus anymore. And they said, who should we obey, man or God? What's the right answer to that? If you got a choice, obey God or man. Glory. It's God, right? Amen. Yes. So anyhow... Here James is talking about the prayer of faith. Say the prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. 
Is any sick among you? Now he's talking about physical ailments here. Now he had thousands in his church. I mean, can you imagine? He, he had thousands in his church, and he said, is there any sick among you? Because there had to be sick among them, right? They'd, been, they'd learned about faith. So, hope, you know, hopefully a lot of them had learned to receive by faith. Amen. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith, said the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith shall save. The word save here is the Greek word sozo. It means deliver. Amen. It's not talking about born again. It's talking about being delivered. And the prayer of faith shall deliver the sick. Amen. And the Lord shall raise Amen. him up. <laughs> and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now the prayer of faith. We're going to read a minute about the prayer of faith. Because the prayer of faith, it includes forgiving people, other people, if you have ought against any. Today, I was at a minister's deal, and one of the ministers, he, he said something about, about Mark eleven twenty six, 26. And so I started quoting it. And he said, well, then in Mark eleven twenty five, 25, so I started quoting that. And he said, boy, you must really know the word. Well, the truth is, those are, are, those are two scriptures every faith preacher should understand. Because Jesus just taught about the prayer of faith. And part of the prayer of faith is Mark 11:25 and 11:26. That's right. They are, they are part of the prayer of faith. Because they're about, it says, and as you stand praying, if you have all against any or anything against anybody, yeah. forgive them yes. so that your Father which is in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Amen. And then the next verse, 26, says, For if you forgive not others, then your Father which is in heaven will not forgive you your trespasses. Yes. Yeah. But the prayer of faith right before that, and we're going to look over there. Turn with me to Mark chapter 11. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Mark chapter 11. Let's start with verse 20 at first. This kind of builds up to it. Yes. <laughs> now this is Jesus and his disciples. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw a fig tree. Oops, wrong, wrong verse. <laughs> Mark 11, chapter, verse 12. And on the morrow, that's almost in the, as in the morning, and on the morrow when they were come to Bethany, he, talking about Jesus, was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Now Jesus, he was hungry. So he saw a fig tree afar off and had leaves. Now usually if fig trees had leaves, they had figs on them. So even though it wasn't the time of figs yet, he, he saw this fig tree, it had leaves, so he figured there's probably figs on it. And so he went to see if maybe there were some figs on it. And he got there, and now remember, everything Jesus said, he was being led by the Spirit of God. Everything Jesus said, he heard them. He said, I only say what I hear the Father say. I only do what I see the Father do. So everything Jesus said and did in his ministry, he was being led by God. He was being led by God. Do you hear me? Amen. He was being led by God. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing Amen. by the word of God. And so God spoke to Jesus before he said this. Now he walked up to the fig tree and he didn't see any fruit on it. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto him, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. In other words, he spoke it loud enough that his, all his disciples heard him say it. He walks up to this fig tree and he starts talking to the tree. That's kind of weird, isn't it? <laughs> if you see some guy talking to a tree, you think, whoa, that's weird. Yeah. Right? But you know, they didn't ask him about it. They just thought, that's weird. <laughs> and he 
told the fig tree, no man will eat fruit of you from this day on. And they probably thought, has he lost his marbles? Yeah. He's talking to a tree. But they just kept that in their mind. And then he went to Jerusalem and did some other things. And then look down to verse 20. This is the next day. And in the morning they passed by. As they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up. They noticed they went back the same direction they came the next morning. And the thing is, Jesus just so told that to the fig tree. He just turned around and walked off. And they went to do other stuff. The next morning they came by. They came by that same area. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. <laughs> now Jesus has the opportunity to teach them about faith here. Yes, he does. And so Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. In the Greek that says, have the faith of God, or have the same kind of faith God has. You see, we can operate in faith just like God does. The same way God operates in faith, we can operate in that same kind of faith. Why? Because we've been made in His image, in His likeness. We are heirs of God and joint heirs of Jesus Christ. He created us yes, he to have dominion and authority yes. in this earth. Yes. And then Jesus gave us authority by his name. Yes. And he said, the works that I do shall they do also, and greater works than these shall they do, because I go to my Father and send you the Holy Ghost. Yes. So the same anointing that was on Jesus is on us, but we have to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes. In Romans chapter 8, it says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Jesus, everything he did, everything he said, he was being led by the Spirit of God. So Jesus, when he spoke to this fig tree, he didn't just do it on his own. He just didn't th think, I think I should curse this fig tree. No, God told him to. You know how I know? Because the Bible says, he said everything. I only say what I hear the Father say. Yes, he is. Come so on. he always said what God said. Yeah, that's right. He said, the words I speak, they're not my words, but it's the Father. And he doeth the works. That's right. Jesus said, if you don't believe me just because I say something, Believe me for the work's sake, because if God confirms his word with signs following. In, in, in Mark, the last verse of the chapter, it says, it says, and they went everywhere preaching the gospel. God and the Lord working with them, confirming his word with signs following. Amen. God confirms the word with signs following. Yes. But you've got to be saying what God says. That's right. Amen. If you've got to believe in what God says, how do you? Yes. And so Jesus is about to teach his disciples the God kind of faith. Verse 23, for verily, that means truly, I say unto you, the, I say unto you that whosoever, we sing a song, whosoever surely meaneth me. Come on. Whosoever surely meaneth me. Whosoever surely meaneth me. Surely meaneth me. Oh, surely meaneth me. Whosoever surely meaneth me. Whosoever meaneth me. That means it means you. It means me. Whosoever means anybody. That's right. Whosoever. Hallelujah. Shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now in the Greek, instead of shall come to pass, it literally says, happens, when he says it. Happens. A present tense word instead of a future tense. Happens. You know how I know this? Years ago, I was praying. I was doing a revival in Assembly of God Church down in Waxahachie, Texas. It was about 1980 or so. And I was doing this revival, and I was out praying in my travel trailer. I had a little travel trailer we pulled behind the car we had. And it was about, the tra whole travel trailer was about as long as for me to get Yeah. That's about how long it was. I could just take about, I could only step about this many, two or three steps, because there was beds at the end. So I just could take two or three steps, and I walked back the other way. 
take two or three steps. And I was praying. I was walking back and forth in the travel trailer praying. And the Lord spoke to me. And he said this, faith doesn't say I believe I'm going to receive something. Faith says I have it now. That's why I have this up here. Faith says I have it now. That's what the Lord spoke to me way back there in that travel trailer. And so I started arguing with the Lord because I knew what Mark eleven twenty three 23 said. I said, but Lord, I said, Mark eleven twenty three 23 says that if you say, speak to this mountain, believe, believe it shall come to pass. And then he just said that back to me. He said it to me three times total. And then I had went to Bible college. I'd already went to Bible college. And they gave us study. We had to buy them, but they had study things that we were supposed to get. And one of the things was the Greek interlinear. I still have the same one back there. It's back there. Mm -hmm. And you can look at it after service if you'd like to. But it is the actual one I had back then. And so I, I looked that up in the... Now, Greek interlinear, what it is, it's the literal Greek and the literal translation of each word under it. And in the Greek interlinear, I have that, that one right back there. That's the one I had that day. But, but in that, I looked that up in there and said, believe what he says happens. Present tense happens. I thought, wow, God's right. <laughs> you know, that's amazing. I mean, the thing is, God, his word is true. Now, I always, when the Lord says something to me, I always look it up to make sure he's right. You know why? The Bible says, test the spirits to see if they give God. There are many spirits in the world. And some of them are deceiving spirits. But God wants you to know the truth. Yes. Yeah. And by the Holy Spirit, he will lead you into all truth. All truth. He'll lead you. He'll lead you and guide you and direct you. And if you're a minister, he will speak to you to help you, to, to teach you what to do. Amen. To teach you about doctrine. Thank you, Lord. A long time ago, it's probably 30 years ago, the Lord spoke to me. And I was reading everybody's stuff. I was watching all, I was listening to tapes from all the ministers. I watched the guys on TV. I read all their books. And I thought I knew something. But that day I found out that I didn't know too much yet. But that day I learned a lot. I learned that, that what, when I speak to a situation, I have to believe it happens when I say it. Yes, amen. I have to believe it happens when I say it. The next verse confirms that. Thank you, Lord. The next verse says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray. When you pray. I call that God-given desires. Notes, when you pray, God will give you desires. Yes, he does. He'll give you desire. And then what you do is you believe you receive those desires when you pray. Amen. In the Greek it says, believe you have received them. In other words, you have to believe you have it before you actually see that you have it. Mm -hmm. That's faith. Amen. It doesn't take me faith to believe that I have this iPad. I mean, I, is an iPad? Yes. yes. IPad. Yeah. It doesn't take me faith to believe I have that because I actually can see it here. But if I didn't have one, and God told me I could have one. Then it would take me faith to believe it. I'd have to believe that I have what God says. I mean, God has Amen. provided, he's provided through his word, great and precious promises. Yes. Now it says in 2 Peter chapter 1, it says by those great and precious promises that we have everything we need for life and godliness. Amen. It's all contained in God's yes. grace. It's all contained in God's grace. Everything Christ did for you is contained in His grace. It's already been freely given to you. But you have to find it. You have to walk in it. You have to receive it by faith. You have to take hold of it and you have to say it. You have to thank God for it. The Bible says God's Word does not return into Him void without accomplishing what He sent it to do. Amen. God's Word does not... And how do we return God's Word to Him? Through speaking. Father, you said... Your word said, by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. So I, I receive that now, and I give you praise that I am healed. Yes. Glory to God. And you keep saying that. You keep believing that. You keep giving him praise and glory for that. Come on. You know what's going to happen? You'll get it. That's right. Thank you, Lord. You'll get it. Why? Because God's word can never fail. God's word, God does not go back on his word. 
Praise God. And something, something Larry said was something I've talked about, about forgiving people. And that's why you were forgiving people, right, in, in the truck today. And that goes on to, that's part of the prayer of faith. In verse, we're finished, verse 24. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. In the Greek it says, have received. You have to believe you already have it. Then you shall have it. In other words, you have to believe you've got it before you like to see that you've got it. If you're waiting to see that until you get it, you'll never get it. That's right. You have to believe you have it. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. Jesus buried your sicknesses, your diseases, your infirmities in his own body on the tree. So you could, so you could be healed in your body. He did that through the stripes that he bare. He buried your sins in his own body on the tree. So you can be dead to sin. You don't have to, to struggle with addictions. I mean, you can be set free by the power yes. of Jesus Christ. Amen. The power of those addictions Amen. can be broken in your That's life. Right. Amen. But you have to receive what the Word says. Amen. That Jesus came to set you free and to make you whole. And you receive that deliverance in Jesus' name. Glory you thank Amen. God that you're set free. Amen. When, that, when that urge comes back up, you say, you are, I'm dead to you in the name of Jesus. That's right. You are, you are, you are gone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you submit to God and you resist the devil with the word of God. You got to get the word in. Amen. Amen. Get the promises in your heart yes. so that they're bigger than the, than the things you see in the flesh. Amen. Because whatever you get your eye focused on, that's what's going to be big in your life. If you get the word of God big in your heart, that will be so big that when situations come, when fear tries to come, God's not giving us a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and yes. sound mind. Fear can be broke if you have a problem with fear. Fear can be destroyed in your life yes. by, by the Word of God. Because there is power in the Word of God. The Bible says God's Word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. In the, in the Amplified, that says living and active and powerful. Quick means alive, living. Yes. God's Word is powerful. One time the Lord spoke to me. He said, there's enough power in every one of my words to accomplish what I sent it to do. Right. Amen. Enough power. There's enough power in God's words to accomplish what he sent it to do. Yes. In, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. Say the word of God. The word, word of God. God. And God said it. God said it. So God said. those things which are seen were not made out of things which do appear. There are things that we can see, right? Yes. There are also things we can't see. There are things in the spirit realm that we can't see. But by, by faith, by faith, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said it. Let there be light. God said. Larry Olson today, one of the ministers up at the convention, which they're Hebrew, his, him and his wife are Hebrew scholars. And he said, it actually says, instead of, instead of let there be light, it actually says light is. Light is. That's what God actually said. Light is. You know why? Because he's a faith God and he created the universe by faith. Amen. The Bible says God told Abraham, I have made you the father of many nations. Now, he was an old man, and he hadn't even had a son for an heir yet. But he told him, I have made you the father of many nations. And then Abraham believed God. He believed God. Even though he was almost 100 years old, he struggled not. He looked not at, he looked not at his physical situation. But he was strong in faith as he was giving glory to God. He didn't consider his own body being dead, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he gave God praise and glory and made his faith strong. Yes, amen. And God had changed his name from Abram to Abraham, which meant the father of many nations. From that point on, he went around saying, Hi, Joe, I'm the father of many nations. <laughs> Hi, Gail, I'm the father of many nations. Hi, Tom, I'm the father of many nations. He, God made him do that. Why? So he would start saying what God said. Yes. Amen. God said, I have Lord. made you the father of many nations. Amen. So God got him saying that by, by changing his name. And so he, so God got his will done. Now let's look. Amen. Thank and as you stand praying, you know, this is part of the prayer of faith. 
as you stand praying, Forget. forgive. Say forgive. 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 If you have aught against any. Thank you. Yes, yes. That your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So part of the prayer of faith is forgiving other people. Yes, yes. Part of the prayer of faith is forgiving other people. If you're trying to believe God for something, but you have resentment and unforgiveness towards people, you need to let it go. Amen. Amen. Because it will hinder you. It doesn't hurt the other person. They may not even know you hate them. They may not even know you have resentment towards them. Now, I've told this story before. But years ago, I needed healing in my body real bad, and I knew how to receive my healing. I knew how to receive by faith. But I really needed healing bad in my body. But I, I wasn't getting better. I just kept getting worse. So I called out to God. And I said, God, what am I doing wrong? Because I know God doesn't miss it. No. God never misses it. God's never missed it. That's right. If we're not receiving, it's because we've missed something. Yes, that's right. So I called out to God. Now, I can hear from God. I do get to hear from God. And so, so I called out to God. Don't ask God if you don't want to know. <laughs> because he will tell you if you don't watch out. And what he tells you, you may not lie. Right. So I called out to God and I said, God, what's, what's wrong? What am I doing wrong? And then the Lord spoke in a still small voice inside me. He said, you hate such and such. And you know, God knows our hearts. God knows our hearts. We, I hear people all the time, they say, well, God knows my heart. He really does. Yes, he does. God really knows your heart. God knows your heart. Everybody else does, too. You know why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes, exactly. Out of the, oh, the overflowing of, of your mouth, of your heart, the mouth speaks. So when you get under pressure, that's what comes out of your mouth. Yes. Right. You know, like an orange? Mm -hmm. You know how to find out what's inside? <laughs> you squeeze it real hard. And that pressure will squeeze the, the juice that's in it out, right? Yes. But whatever, when you get under pressure, whatever's in is going to come out. And so, and so, the Lord said, "You hate such and such." And I said, "You're telling me the truth, Lord. I really, and I hate it. I really did. I hate it. And and they deserved it. <laughs> they really did. But you know what? I never told him I hated it." So it was hindering me from, that hatred was hindering me from receiving my healing. So I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. I decided not to hate anymore. That's right. Glory. I mean, because I, I was on the verge of dying, I thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he's going to die or forgive somebody, I decided to forgive somebody. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And so I did. I said, now, I would pray for him, but I'd pray, Lord, kill him. I'd pray like that. <laughs> you know, the word says, vengeance is mine. Say, the Lord, I will recompense, right? Yeah. So I thought, well, get him, God. Kill him. Jesus said, don't do that. He said, don't, don't wish harm on people. He said, bless those. Don't yes. curse them. Bless them. Bless people. Don't curse them. So I said, Lord, help him. Draw him to yourself in a mighty way. I started praying for him that day like that. You know what God did? He totally healed my body that day. Yes. That day I got totally healed. That day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's some little thing like that that hinders you from receiving from God. Some little thing that hinders you from receiving from God. Some little thing that hinders you from receiving from God. If you have ought against any, forgive me, so that your Father which is in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Yes, thank you. God is good. Yes, He is. He is mighty. He is, he is worthy of our prayers. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you. Father, we just pray, Lord, you take Thank this you. word, Father, Thank and grant it deep within our hearts. Father, Thank help us Jesus. to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Father, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to come alive in this house. In every heart, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank Father, you. give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to understand. And I give you praise, and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Would you amen. give us something to say, brother? Mm -hmm. Come up here. <laughs> Give us a word. Give us a quick word. Quick word. Oh, okay. well, whatever. Whatever God has. Yeah. Whatever God has. For you. Praise the Lord. Bless you. Hallelujah. Here, let me give you a smile. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
No pressure. No quick word. I tell you, you can take as long as you need. That was, that was awesome preachers, stuff. You know, that's the, turn this on. <laughs> that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of stuff you take to the bank of heaven. Amen. And uh, and uh, make a withdrawal. Just stick it in his pocket. That's not every it. time. Has Amen. Inside. Hallelujah. You got it there. No. <laughs> yeah, okay. There you go. The empty pocket. Right, there. Praise God. Thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can't. It just don't get no better. It might not love it. That's 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 the yes. stuff I cut my teeth on. You know? <laughs> yep. I got spirit filled a whole bunch of years ago, back in 1973. I I I didn't know sick and come here. I'll tell you. And a uh, man came and gave me all. The all the cassette tapes that Kenneth Copeland had ever made at that time. And, the, I mean, Mark 11, 23, 24, I mean, there it was, you know. Yes. And I, I started from there. And we found out that uh, that uh, faith works. Yes, it does. Amen. 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 Uh, look at, over, over your Bible, over to the book of Romans 12, chapter. Father, thank you for this opportunity to share yes, Lord. for a few moments here to this Glory precious body God. of people. Father, I thank you for your precious Holy Word. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Holy Spirit, Jesus. direct me and guide me and give me utterance tonight for, thank you, Lord. that I can be a blessing to this precious body of people. In Jesus' thank you. precious name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. amen. Romans, the 12th chapter, there's a verse of scripture here. Uh, that we're going to read. Now, I'm reading out of New King James, but I'm going to read this out of the New King James, and then we'll, we'll go to King James. Uh, Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, brethren, by the virtues of God, that you, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsible service. And do not be uh, uh, conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your, your mind that you <clears throat> may prove what is a good and acceptable uh, and perfect will of God. For I say to you, through the grace given to you, to me, to every man who is among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to it, it to think, but in be sober that God has dealt to everyone, every one, a measure of faith. Amen. Now, the King James Version says this: God has dealt to every man the measure. Of faith. The measure. That's right. Now I've heard, I've heard, uh, you know, that people say, well, uh, there's a difference between a measure of faith, brother, and the measure of faith. Yes. Amen. 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 And so people back would, would say, well, you know, actually God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. And because we've got some of these great faith people and, and, and they have a greater measure of faith than brothers so and so on and so on and so forth. And, 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 but every man has the measure of faith that uh, he needs. Amen. I, I, I couldn't buy that. So I went back and looked at that and got to digging around. And I've had, you see, either the measure of faith or a measure of faith, one of them is wrong. Yep. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. Now, if we can go to work, brother, and find out what the measure of faith God dealt to us in, we'll know, won't we? That's right. Well, I found it. 
<laughs> Glory to God. Ooh, look at the book of Ephesians. The, uh, the, the, uh, the second chapter. And uh, I want to be sure you start in the right place. We're looking about, well, let's just start with the first verse. That way we'll, we'll, we'll get there. And you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and in sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Yes. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even, now look at this. Even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, sins and trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved Hallelujah. and have raised us up together. Yes. Amen. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, we could go a little further with this. But, but here's the thing. Faith raised Jesus from the dead. Yes. And the same measure of faith that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is the same measure that he dealt to you to raise you from the dead. Amen. Amen. Glory. Come on. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank That's you. good stuff. That is. <laughs> yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. So, that tells me that there's no faith shortage in the body of Christ. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. We don't have it. So, well, Pastor, I just don't have faith for that. Well, you were dealt the measure of faith. It's down there somewhere. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The, look, look over it. In Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Boy, I'll tell you, I love the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. In that first verse, it says, now faith is, so that tells us that faith is now. Amen. Yes. Faith is right now. The major faith is right now. Now faith is the substance. Faith is, su is substance. Yes. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I remember back when we started out way back there, 1973, back in there. And I had all these wonderful tapes of Brother Copeland's. And he would talk about this verse of Scripture. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And he would always say, hope is future tense. So if you're hoping for something, you got out here in the future, but faith is now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if you're hoping out here in the future, your faith can't make a connection with the That's future right. is right. now. Amen. Come on. Sweet. Amen. And so I preached that a long time. Like I, I thought that boy, I'll tell you, I hated I hated hope. 
Boy, I'm telling you, you never heard me ever say I hope so. You never heard me, you never even saw me thinking about I hated hope. <laughs> One day, I was back in my bedroom praying, you know, and things wasn't working just exactly like I thought they ought to. And I was probably whining, it's probably what I knew. <laughs> and God spoke to me and he said, get your concordance and look up that word hope. I said, I know what hope is. It's hope, future tension, and I give you that wonderful definition that Copeland gave me. And then I went back to griping and complaining and <laughs> whining and belly aching and carrying on. And finally he said, get your concordance and look up that word hope. I said, I know what hope is, but this time I'm aggravated. And I went back and wired around, and finally he said, I told you to look up that word hope. Now you get your concordance and do it now. <laughs> and so I reluctantly got my little concordance. It little, you know, didn't have computers back then. If it did, could have, would have been able to turn it on anyway. <laughs> and I looked it up, and it said hope. The happy anticipation of something about to happen. The happy anticipation of, of something good about to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Faith, are you here? Mm -hmm. Faith puts substance to what you're expecting to happen now. Yes. 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 Come on. Get that expector on. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Glory. <laughs> you can take that thing to heaven, brother. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And it, it absolutely might changed my life. And it changed my prayer life because what I found out hope was the expectation of I got it. I'm expecting that I'm anticipating. Yes. It went on, it, 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 one translation, it, it concords, said it's looking, stretching your neck out, neck out the window and looking and watching for it. Yes. Amen. Praise you, Amen. Father. Amen. Now faith is the substance. Now faith. Now faith. The happy anticipation Hallelujah. of receiving, having in your hand the thing that you prayed the prayer of faith for in the first place. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Praise you, Father. Yes. Glory. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you Lord. Lord. Thank you. Now, when you, when, you, when you get that revelation, then there's a revelation of the power of calling those things that be not as though they were. Yes. Because if you do it with hope, the happy anticipation of it about to happen, you will take the words of your mouth and begin to speak until that anticipation will cause what you're saying to materialize Amen. and Amen. come into the natural. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Amen. Thank yes. You, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Boy, I'll tell you right now, when I, <laughs> when I got hold of that, boy, the first thing I did to go to church Sunday and preach it. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> And, and 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 I've been and I've been I've been preaching it ever since. That's Amen. good. Thank you. Oh, what a powerful. Amen. Powerful word. That little word. <coughs> Faith won't work without it. Come on, brother. Amen. 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 Takes home. You got to expect it, but folks, 
that faith, partially, partially, it is the expectation. What things ever you desire, when you pray, believe, you receive them, that's a, that is a statement of fact. Yes. yes. It says, I remember back when we started studying all that, you know, and the, the, uh, 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 whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and ye shall have them. And the, the, the religious people <coughs> considered the desire as something bad, uh, lusting after something. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Free flesh. But in the book of Proverbs, it says the desire of the just is only good. Amen. 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 Praise you, Father. Amen. In the book of Proverbs, it says that when the desire comes, there's joy. Yes. Now, what, what does that mean? That means that God leads us, directs us, points our uh, points us in the direction of his plan by placing a desire in your heart. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 I, I've got that revelation, Mike, a long time ago. Way back, I don't know, back in the, the probably the 80s, maybe. I had a, a meeting up in, up in the, the Trenton area. Anybody know where Trenton's at? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I had a, 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 I bought into a little, into a 172 Cessna airplane. I was a licensed pilot. And uh, I was asked to come up and preach a meeting, so I, I, I flew up there. And the day that I flew up in that thing, the weather was just rotten. It's, it's drizzling rain. It, it was, it's, it, the visibility was about a mile, you know, about a mile visibility. I mean, it was just very minimum VFR. It was thick and it, rough. And this little airplane was fully IFR equipped. I mean, they, they had the radio, it had a, a, a a, a system in there that you could tune in radio frequency and and there's a little zoom within where it come up to zero if you just leave that thing there if you it would fly you to any radio station in the world and in the, these airports they've got a, a thing they call an mdb a non-directional beacon that sends out a radio signal and and they had one in that airport in Trent. And when I, before I took off there at Lamar, I tuned that radio frequency in that ADF. And then I headed north up 71 Highway. And when I got to Butler, that, that needle, pshht. brother, I had lost no more. As long as I keep that little bit on zero, I'm going to fly to Trent. And it was just, oh, it was rough. And Mike, I'm sitting there thinking about that radio frequency that I put in that radio. And it dawned on me that that, when I put that frequency in that radio, I put a desire in that airplane. It had a desire. And that desire, which was that radio frequency, was the thing that would bring it to the will of God. If that had to been the will of God, which it was, that frequency, if you stayed on course, yes. if you held fast your confession, mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. 
you, you are you here? You steer your course yes. by the words on, of your mouth. Amen. Stay on the right path. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Praise you, Father. And as long as I held that frequency, brother, that desire in that little airplane's heart would bring it to the fulfillment of the will of God in his life. Amen. 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 And uh, I flew right over the top of Excelsior Springs. And it, like I say, it was, it was rough. And Frank Trenton's on up the road here several miles. And I'm standing there, and, and it, it, I had the seatbelt just down as tight as I could get it so I wouldn't break my neck when my head hit the, the ceiling because it'd go drop me by about 20 feet or something like that, <coughs> right back up. <coughs> and I looked down, and I saw Excelsior Springs go by. Brother, I'll tell you that your faith gets strong. <laughs> because I'm, let me tell you something. You're sitting in this cockpit, and you, you can't see anything. But that zero with that little hand sticking up there. And you have no idea, brother, how, what the, the how hard it is to not turn it around and go back or turn a different direction. There's this thought, you know, that, that we might be lost. I mean, I'm a licensed pilot. I'm trained to do this. I, I, I'm a good pilot. I was a good pilot. But all the thoughts that you have that run through your thinking, mm -hmm. When you are standing on the Word of God, pressing in towards that desire that God put in you. Yes. The Bible says when the desire comes, there's joy. Amen. Amen. Because you know the direction. God, any time God leads you to do something, my brother, sister, he'll put a desire yes, in he your will. heart yes. to do it. That's how you know the will of God, Amen. folks. Amen. Yes. You know, I'll tell you, just, God just don't talk to me like he does you know, my pastor. Do you ever have a desire? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, have a yes. lot of time. Hey, duh. <laughs> That's God. That's the Holy Ghost. He has, he has stuck, he has programmed your spirit, your heart. And, and, and as you start in the direction of fulfilling that desire, you will fulfill the will of God in your life Amen. every time. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. It says, Proverbs, the desire of the righteous is only good. <laughs> Woo! Boy, that Glory. felt good. Amen. Glory to God. God given desires. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I was, I, when I crossed over Excelsior Springs and I flew a little farther. I grabbed that radio up and pulled it up. Said, Trenton, you need to call this assessment such and such and such and such at such and such altitude at such and such speed. Uh, 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 destination, Trenton Airport at that old radio cracked and they called back. Oh man, a oh, man, a oh, Holy Ghost. In <laughs> 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 a little bit in the fog, I saw the end of that run when I reached up full time. You begin to settle down. When I hit this end of that runway, I was a pattern out too, brother. <laughs> Turned out of the thing in the nose and just that wind in the wind and just kissed that old runway and it just gives you that warm fuzzy feeling oh, all yes. the time. <laughs> 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 the desire of my heart has manifest. Amen. What things soever you desire. desire. When you pray, right. believe that you receive them yeah. and you shall have them. Yeah, when the yeah. desire comes and you pray, you don't have to, the, the devil comes and say, 
You lust and you lust for pain, you lust for that. No, 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 no. I've got a desire. God put that desire yes. in there because yes. this is his will for Amen. my life and he wants to bless me with yes. it. Yes, and I'm going to rejoice Lord, and I'm going to tell yes. everybody that I say, I've got it. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Praise you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. 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 And he shall have them. Yes. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yes, amen. What's of you desire? When the desire comes, joy comes. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's some there's some there's somebody here that's had a desire in their heart for a long time and you've pushed it aside and pushed it aside and, and ignored it. And all the time, it was God programming your spirit and setting your course for the next step of your life. Amen. Setting your course in a direction of a blessing that only faith will produce. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Glory to God. Glory. You take that to the bank, guys. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Praise that, God. That, that's the way God yes, he leads. Yes, he is. You know, he who's led by the Spirit are sons of God. That's the way God leads you. Yes. He puts a desire in your heart. Religion will tell you that's lust and, and all that. So you, you don't pay any attention to that stuff. You know better than that. Amen. There's every, there are people here right now that have been harping at God for, for no telling how long about direction for your life. Don't look at me so sanctimonious. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and every now and this, this, this desire has popped up in you and it was so far out and, and so absolutely opposite of some things some of you are thinking that you, you that that you would stick. But if you repent and ask God for direction and a desire that desire, when it comes, instead of quenching the thing, start in the direction of that desire, and you will step into an area of your life, bless God, that will cause blessings that you won't have room enough to contain. <laughs> Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. That's a wonderful That's word. God is a good. Yes, he is. Amen. 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 You say, well, I thought, no, the devil did it. What you get from the devil is called lust. There's a, di there's a difference, sure. you know, Mike. Sure. Lust is flesh. Yes. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Well, did you get anything out of there? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Y'all the best, God, God, and I love you. Appreciate you putting up with me. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you. Praise God. Well, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Well, glory to God. Thank you guys you. got a double dose tonight, didn't you? Yes. Come on. Yeah. He's mighty. God is mighty. Yes. He is worthy of our praise. Yes. You might need prayer here tonight. Thank you, Lord. You might need, yes. Jean. Your wife? She's okay. got a cold. Well, let's lift up Jean right now. Father God, we just pray that for yes, Jean, Lord, Lord, touch her body, we pray. Yes. In Jesus' name, you are mighty, God. You are more than enough. Thank you. 
And we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name. And we call it done. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yes, Behold, in the name of Jesus. Yes.